I was a big fan of the fighting fantasy game books when I was younger. Uh, I got through most of the main ones, but I never got around to playing the sorcery series. I was always curious about them. It was a separate four book series where you could take the same character through one long epic journey. It sounded incredible, but I never got to play it. Until now! It's 40 years since this book was first published, so to celebrate I'm going to try to play through the whole thing, followed by all the sequels. This may take multiple playthroughs, but I'll try not to cheat too much. So let's see what happens as I journey into the Shamu Tanti Hills. Uh, right, the first thing to do is to roll up my character. Firstly, skill. Three. Great. And uh, you can play as a warrior or a wizard. Uh, I've decided to play as a wizard. Uh, because that's really the USP of the sorcery series. Uh, but unfortunately you only get to add four skill points. So that's three plus four is seven. Stamina, roll two dice and add twelve. Five, good. Another five, good. So that's ten plus twelve, twenty-two. And for luck, roll one dice and add six. Six, great. Uh, I've also got 20 gold pieces and two provisions. So let's get started. I won't read out all the text uh, because I think that might be copyright. Uh, but basically, you're from the Kingdom of Annaland. And you're on a mission to recover the Crown of Kings, which has been stolen and taken through the evil land of Kakabad. It's possible there may be some racial stereotypes involved, uh, but this book was written 40 years ago. Although this is a new printing, so they may have removed them. We shall see. Right, firstly you come to a village. The round huts are made of a hard-baked, bright clay with thatched roofs. As you pass, eyes appear at dark doorways, watching your movements. Suddenly a villager appears from one of the dwellings and stands before you. He is five feet tall with thick set arms and thighs half closed in tattered breeches. His eyes are wild and his long red hair and beard stands out on his face in a wary tangle. Halt stranger, he commands. What business have you in Cantapani? What is your response? Tell him you are a trader, ask for directions, tell him you are hungry and need provisions. Um, ask for directions. With three. You explain you are travelling to Carre and ask him for advice on the way ahead. I myself have never left this village, said the man, but you have two paths ahead. My advice though is not free. For two gold pieces I will tell you what I know. You accept his offer, pay the money and turn to two two five. Yeah, that seems legit. I could do with some advice. He places the coins in a pouch around his waist. The low way leads to the Vale of the Elven, he tells you. And unless you are prepared for Elven ways, for they are mischievous and magical, be racist, you would better avoid this path. The highway takes you up into the hills, past the Shanka Mines. He laughs and adds, but you must keep your head if you take this path. Head onwards for Christotandi, which you will reach in a day or two. For few villages in the Shamatanti Hills welcome strangers. And at Christotandi you will at least find food and shelter. And beware the black lotus on your travels, its sweet Romeo is deadly. You thank him for your advice and press onwards. Okay, well, that seems like it was worth it. Easy one. You pass along the main path through the centre of the village. There is a small inn offering food for sale at which you may stop, or you may press on through the village. Uh, yes, let's go to the inn. It's a fancy land, let's, let's go into the inn. The inn offers hot meals for sale, and if you wish to stop and eat, the charge will be one gold piece. Bread and goat's cheese are also available if you wish to 
buy food to take with you, and a price of two meals worth is two gold pieces. I've already spent two gold pieces. This is getting really expensive. Um, I think I'll continue on actually. You continue along the path, leaving the village behind. About half an hour later, you reach the start of the climb into the hills and continue upwards. Five minutes later, you reach a fork, offering you two ways onwards. Okay, next, you meet an old man stuck in a tree. You don't get any choice in the matter, you just help him down. And he gives you a rhyme, which may help you. See him though he sees you not. The black-eyed creature creeps. A guardian once, but now he's lot. The key to freedom keeps. Okay, so I'll have to remember that. And he also gives you page one or two from a spell book. You may now choose your way onwards. Will you go the highway into the hills? Or the long way along the valley? Alternatively, you may investigate the buzzing coming from around the tree. Yeah, well, I'm not doing the buzzing because that might be a horde of killer bees, or wasps, or hornets. So I'll, I'll take the little guy's advice and go the highway up into the hills. The path winds upwards into the hills and you enter a wood. The afternoon sun glints through the trees, playing tricks on your eyes. Every so often you catch a glimpse of some strange shaped animal. Or are they watching you? Won't you find it is these silhouetted branches and trees caught at a down angle? You reach a position where you may rest and eat provisions if you wish. No, I'm good. If you wish to continue, turn to 2.10. The climb continues for two or three hours. This path twists this way up and up the hillside. Soon the air gets cold and the sun sets, making it difficult for you to see. However, the moon is full and will be able to light the way as it gets darker. Do you want to continue marching through the night or make camp to get some sleep? Well, it's, it's going to be a lot more dangerous travelling at the night, so I think I'd better make camp. You settle down to make camp for the night. You may take provisions here, and if you do, you may add, you may add two stamina points if you've not had eaten, just leave another land, or one stamina point if you have already eaten. Well, I'm good, I've got loads of stamina, so I'm fine. As you curl up in your blanket to sleep, there is a chance you may encounter a wandering night creature. Remember this reference and turn to one, two, three. Night creatures are less likely to approach you in your camp, so you may add two points to the death roll you are required to make. Roll one die to see whether you encounter any night creatures. Right, here we go. Six. Five plus no encounter. Great. Carry on. After your night's sleep, you may add two stamina points if you encounter no night creatures. Oh, great. This is going well so far. I'm back along the trail, turn to 31. Did you eat at all on the first day of your journey? If not, you were feeling very hungry and lose three to... What? That's cheating. Come on. Okay, I've got enough plenty. I have to remember to eat next time. Turn to two, four, six. Right, to the left is a clearing full of goblin heads planted in the ground. A large X is painted on a tree as a warning to venture no further. Uh, ahead, the path forks to the right and left, but you cannot be sure which path you are warned not to take. Oh, great. Uh, right hand path or left hand path? Well, if the clearing full of heads is on the left, um, I'll go the right hand path. You press on, climbing the hillside for several hours, and then you run into some goblins. They're mining a cave, but you can slip past them down the hill. I think I'll just slip past them, I think. You follow a path leading sharply downhill into a narrow valley. A large creature stands before you. It has black and white fur and a long bushy tail. It blocks your way and is snarling menacingly at you. Do you attack it or try to go around peacefully? I'll, I'll always choose peace. I mean, I'll try to get around it, but I am guess it's just going to attack me anyway. So let's see, 236. Test your luck, of course. Right, so my luck is pretty high at the moment, so that's that's good. 
three and six nine that means I'm lucky you manage to creep around the creature and though it snarls menacingly it does not attack you Ray. you continue onwards up the path for a couple of hours down another valley and back up another hill it is now late afternoon and you begin to think about where you will stay for the night ahead of you however is a small village set into the hill that's handy turn to 28 you walk into the village young hill dwellers pass you and stare at your strange clothes how dare you their own attire is rough by comparison and everyone wears their hair long but piled upon their heads you pass without incident into the centre of the village we look for an inn for the night or find an ale house and relax I mean usually inns and ale houses are basically the same thing so uh, but I'm guessing the ale house is more likely to get you into a fight so I'll go for the inn instead the village inn will charge you three gold pieces for a night's rest and two gold pieces for the and food uh, well I've only got 18 gold pieces left I mean it seems a bit steep but uh, this is what I would do in real life so I guess I'll just have to pay for it the meal has just been served if you want to sit down to eat pay the two gold pieces and have your bowl of skunk bear stew and three stamina points If you want to rest for the night, pay three gold pieces and add five stamina points. Well, stamina's great, but the gold's not looking too hot. Did you eat at all yesterday? Yes, I did. I'm beginning to get the hang of this. So, no penalty. Uh, there were two ways on. Choose your path button to 125 or 226. I mean, I mean, they could at least give us a clue which one might be better. Uh, I guess I'll just go 125. You leave Christosanti along a path which snakes you into the hills. All morning you follow it through the woods and gnarled trees until eventually you reach a clearing where another path joins from the east. A signpost indicates straight onto Dumpus or westwards to Aliana. Um, I'll go straight on. You follow the path for the rest of the afternoon until you stand on a hilltop. The path runs down the hill into a small village set on a river and you follow it down. As you follow the path downwards you pass a sign. You are entering the village of Dumpus. Will you find an inn and rest for the night or try and make contact with the villagers? I mean it's been a pretty uneventful day but uh, up here I guess I'll find another inn for the night. Three gold pieces for a meal and three gold pieces for a bed. Flip it heck. That's seven left, I hope there's not much longer to go, otherwise I'm going to run out. But the meal gets me three more stamina. You settle down for the night, and you can add another two stamina points for a refreshing night's sleep. I mean, this is getting ridiculous. I must be the fittest man in all of... I mean, my stamina is ridiculous, but I haven't had to fight anything yet. But uh, when I do, it's going to go down fast. You rise early to leave Dumpus. You may leave the village along one of two paths. One winds up into the hills, the other takes a downhill route into the wood. Eh, up into the hills. It's called the Shamrock County Hills, after all. Um, and you reach another village. As you arrive, the villagers notice you and make for their huts, almost as in fear. They are a sorry looking bunch, short and squat, with tough leathery skin. Several of them are missing limbs, and some are only able to drag themselves along with their hands. Will you try to talk with the villagers, or continue onwards? Uh, yeah, I'll talk with them. This sounds like a pleasant bunch. You knock at the door of one of the huts. There is no reply. You may enter anywhere or try another hut. Well, I'll enter anyway. Inside the hut is no furniture. A small fire burns in the middle of the floor and against the far wall stands a family of three carrying away from you. Will you hold on your hand in friendship or cast a spell? Um, I'll hold up my hand in friendship. The man shuffles nervously over and shakes your hand. Are you a magical stranger? He asks. Are you not afraid of us? Or perhaps you are a healer who can cure us all of the plague. What the? At his last words you spring back, but it's too late. You have made contact with a plague carrier. 
and from now onwards you will lose three summoner points each day until you either die or find someone who can cure you of the plague. Deduct your points first thing in the morning. You are horrified at your discovery. Back out of the hut and leave the village quickly, 10 to 2.20. Uh, well on that note, I think I'd better end this week's session before anything worse happens. Well, I'll be back next week with another instalment. Uh, if you don't want to miss that, you may want to subscribe. In the meantime, you can click the link to see one of my earlier attempts at playing fighting fantasy, which went extremely badly. See you next time.